Welcome, it's good to see you today for our third Lenten service. We're um, meeting during Lent and we're reading through the book of Jonah. So today we're doing Jonah's prayer from the belly of the great big fish. Um, please keep in your prayers, particularly all the folks still in the Southern United States, not only Texas, but also Mississippi and Oklahoma, who are still recovering from the winter storm of a few weeks ago. I will share my screen and we will begin our service today. Let us pray. Walk with us, loving God, as we tread these 40 days of Lent. As your servant Jonah prayed to you, even in his distress, may we too remember that nothing in all creation can separate us from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading today is from the second chapter of Jonah. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord in my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountain. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God, our creator, and from Jesus, the Savior. Amen. So what is the prayer of the dying? If you've ever sat by the side of someone who was dying, what was that like? An old man who I'll call John in my last parish was dying. His wife had died six years earlier, but he'd still gotten him, himself to church each week. He's always dressed nicely in a suit and tie. And his health had been pretty good. He seemed like one of those wise old elders who would be with us forever. And then very suddenly, his kidneys failed. He went on dialysis. And he put up with that for about a month going three times a week, sitting for the three or four hours it took for his blood to be cleaned by machines. And each time he went, he got weaker and weaker and he hated it. He finally got to the point where he said enough, he was done. So he talked with his family about discontinuing the dialysis and they agreed that he was in his right mind and that they would support his decision. So he stopped the dialysis and soon was hospitalized. I visited him regularly almost every day for a week and his body started shutting down one organ at a time. And on the last day that I visited him, he grasped my hand tightly. John had always been a really strong man and he fixed me with his eyes and he, his eyes just bored into me and he said, tell me. And I sat back 
and I paused, taking a minute to choose my words as I tried to figure out what to say to him. But John was impatient and he said, and he leaned forward and he said again, tell me. And I knew what he was asking. He was asking me to reassure him that it was going to be all right, that he was loved and that death was not going to be the end. And so I started to sing to him, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. I read the 23rd Psalm to him and we prayed. John joined me as we prayed the Lord's Prayer together. That evening he slipped into a coma and died the next day. What is the prayer of the dying? Jonah is sloshing around in the belly of the great big fish after almost drowning at the, in the storm at sea. The terror and fear have probably receded a little bit and now he's facing his own death alone and feeling kind of sorry for himself. He tried to run away from God and it didn't work out very well. But then we all try to do that in one way or another. At this point, he is certain that he's going to die there in the belly of that fish. And his words are all about that, about, about being in a scary place and about trusting God to still care for him. Then I said, I am driven from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds wrapped around my head. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord. This psalm, because that's what it is, it's a song. It's a song of confession. This psalm is Jonah's last will and testament. It's his confession, both of his sin, but also of his faith. It's sort of like Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the face of death, in the face of the end, Jesus and Jonah both cast all their hopes, all their fears, all their faith onto God's mercy and love. Jonah doesn't pray this knowing he's going to be spit out of the whale, out of the fish, and go on to Nineveh. Jonah is praying this precisely because he's sure he's never going to see the world again. And so he leans back, resting on his faith in God and on God's goodness and love to hold him even in a scary place. Like John, whose story I told you at the beginning, Jonah is singing his version of Amazing Grace singing his confession of his own lostness and God's never failing love. We don't any of us know how we're gonna face death. We don't know if we're gonna be in a hospital room or at home in the garden or hopefully not in the belly of a great big fish. We don't know if we're going to be all alone or surrounded by loved ones. We don't know if it's going to be quick or slow. We don't know how we will face that moment, a moment 
we know we all have to face one day. We hope and pray that we'll be able to face it with courage, with hope, with faith. Maybe we'll be able to hold on to the hand of someone we love who will say, will say to them, tell me, and they'll reassure us. Maybe we'll be alone. Maybe we'll be able to ask somebody to tell us the old, old story. The story that goes back to the beginning of the universe, the story of God's great and boundless love. Or maybe we'll hear it in our minds because we know that story very well. Maybe we will know that even if we have failed in our lives, we are forgiven and we are free. That God does not count our failures and our misdeeds against us. That even though we have been lost, God has found us. God has loved us. And God will always bring us home. Now, let me share my screen again. And we will continue with the prayers. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For hearing us in our distress, we thank you, O God. For those who do not share our faith, but who are still known to you, we thank you, O God. For the awesome power and majesty of your creation and for all the creatures of this world, we thank you, O God. For your love for us, even when we run away from you. We thank you, O God. For those who are sick, homeless, suffering, and in despair, we pray especially today for all the people in the Southern United States who still suffer from lack of good water and electricity. Heal them, O God. For an end to this pandemic, and for the equitable distribution of vaccine throughout the world. Hear our prayer, O oh God. All this and whatever else that you see that we need, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.